Hi friends, welcome to the video of groups. In this video, we will discuss about group with the help of suitable examples and identify finite and infinite groups. At the end of this video, you will be able to define groups and identify finite and infinite groups. So, let's define what do you mean by a group. We already have the concept of binary operation. So, with the help of that binary operation, we can define what you mean by a group. So, group is nothing but a non-empty set G with the binary operation star on it and this set G with the binary operation star on it, if it satisfies the following properties, then we said that G is a group. And what are the properties? First one is the closure property, which says that consider any two elements of the group G, apply the binary operation means A star B, the resultant should also be an element of the set G. This is called the closure property. Second is the associative law for any three elements of the set G. A star B star C means that first apply the operation B star C, the resultant, then apply the resultant with the A. It should be equals to A star B star C in the sense that first take the binary operation of A and B. What should be the resultant? Multiply it or take the binary operation with the C these two uh, sides, the left hand side and the right hand side should be same. The third property is called existence of identity elements, means, which means that if there exists an identity element E from the set G such that for any element A from the set G, if we are going to uh, take the binary operation of A and E or E and A, the resultant should be always A. Uh, Simply we can understand is uh, in a simple way we can say that if E is equals to 1 and the binary operation is a multiplication then and we are going to multiply A with 1 the resultant is going to be 1. So, this is just an idea to understand uh, what exactly we mean from saying that A star E is equals to E star A is equals to A. Fourth property says that existence of inverse means that for any element belonging to the set G there should always exist another element B such that if you are going to put the binary operation on these two elements, the resultant should always be identity. So, simple way uh, for understanding it, you can say that if A is equals to 2, then B should be equals to 1 by 2 and it should always be present in the set G such that if you are going to multiply it, 1 is always there. So, this is what exactly means, means that B is the inverse of A. These are the four main properties which shows that the group, uh, the set G with the binary operation is a group. When we are going to say that the set G with the binary operation with these four properties, it is said to be a commutative group if it uh, satisfies this property, means that uh, A star B should be equals to B star A, means if the binary operation is commutative, then we call that group to be a commutative group or in the other way, sense, we can say that it is an abelian group. So, abelian group or a commutative group, it is one and the same thing. Let us now consider some examples of the groups. So, first example we are considering is the set Z of integers and the binary operation we are taking is the simple addition. We will show that the set Z with the binary operation addition, it is an abelian group, means that we will show that first it satisfies the four axioms for the set to be a group and then the last we will show that it is the elements of the group are commutative also. So, let us start with the closure property. So, it says that let us suppose M and N are two elements from the set Z and if we are going to add the two elements from the set Z, the addition of integers is always an integer. This means that M plus N is also an element of the set Z. Similarly, the associative law, if you are going to add three elements from the set of integers in either of the manner, the resultant is always going to be the same. Means that if we are going first going to add m plus n, whatever be the result and then add it with p, it is equivalent to saying first add n and p and then add it with m. This is true for every numbers uh, from the set of integers. So, this shows that associativity law also holds good for the set of integers with the binary operation addition. Next, we want to find the existence of identity elements. 
So for the addition, what would be the number so that if we are going to add any number with that number, the resultant should be the same number itself. So here you can easily find out that the number is 0. If you are going to add any integer with the 0, you are going to the same, you are going to get the same integer again. So, so 0 is present in the set of integer, it means that identity element is also there in the set of z with the binary operation addition. So, exist identity element also exists in the set of integers. Next what we have to find is the inverse. So, how to find if the binary operation is addition so that the resultant should be the identity element. So, if m is any element from the set z, there always exists a minus m in z because set of integers consists 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on and minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on. So, if m is in particular m is equals to 1, there always exists a minus 1 in the set of integers such that if you are going to add it, the answer is 0. So, 0 is our identity element. This is what it is written here. So, this means that uh, z with the binary operation addition, it satisfies all the four properties of a group. So, z with the binary operation addition is a group. This is proved here. Now, what is left is we have to show that it is commutative also. Then we can say that z plus is an abelian group. So, what commutative law says? It says that if you are taking any two elements from the set and if you, the addition is the binary operation, then m plus n should be equals to n plus m. So, it is very much clear that the addition of integers it is going to be the same either you are you are going to add 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1 the result is also uh, always going to be same. So, here the commutative law holds in case of our uh, set z with the binary operation plus. So, we can say here that the set z with the binary operation plus is a group moreover it is more than that it is an abelian group. Now, let us look at another example of the group. Suppose you are considering the set of non-zero rational numbers. Non-zero rational numbers means all the rational numbers except the number 0 and we are here applying the binary operation multiplication. So, we will check that whether the set uh, of non-zero rationals with the binary operation multiplication is it going to be an abelian group. So, it means that we have again have to check all the 5 properties. So, first is the closure property. Which, which can be easily checked that take two non-zero rational numbers, their multiplication is again going to be a non-zero rational number. Hence, the closure property holds good. Second is the associativity law. Multiplication is always associative. Whether first you multiply first two numbers in the third one or uh, first one and multiplication of second and third first and then multiply it with the first one, multiplication is always going to be the same uh, for the case of non-zero rational numbers. So, here the associativity law also holds good. Good that is a into b dot c is equivalent to first add multiplying a into b and then multiply it with c. The third property should be the identity property. In case of multiplication identity means that if you are going to multiply any of the numbers from the non-zero rational numbers with that particular number the result should be the number itself. So, easily you can find out that 1 is a non-zero rational which when multiplied with any of the non-zero rational, the result is always going to be the non-zero rational, the same non-zero rational. So, 1 is the uh, identity element for non-zero rationals. So, the last property is the existence of inverse. So, it says that uh, if uh, a is some number from the non-zero rationals, so there should exist uh, another number say 1 by a says that when you are going to multiply a and 1 by a the resultant should be your identity. So, clearly if suppose a is equals to 2, 2 is a rational number it is ok. So, what is 1 by 2? Uh, uh, 1 by 2 is e, uh, if you are going to multiply 2 into 1 by 2 the answer is going to be 1 which is the identity element and 1 by 2 is a rational number, 2 is a rational number you multiply it you are getting the uh, identity element which is 1 which is also a non-zero rational numbers. So, this means that if a is an element from the uh, non-zero rationals, so 1 by a is also an element from the non-zero rational numbers. So, it satisfies all the 4 properties of the group. The last one for checking that the set of non-zero rationals 
to be an abelian is the commutative property and it can be easily verified that if you are going to multiply two non-zero rationals either uh, a, uh, a, a into b or b into a it is always going to be the same number. So, in this way we have proved that the set of non-zero rationals with the binary operation multiplication is an abelian group. So, now having the concept of a group let us now move to the finite and infinite group. What do you mean by finite group? A group is said to be finite if the number of elements in the group G is finite. If the number of elements in the group is not finite then we used to call it to be an infinite group. So, uh, the particular number of elements in a group G is called order of the group G. Suppose a set G has 4 elements then what would be the order of that particular set? It is 4. So, the number of elements in a finite group is called order of the group. So, now let us have a look on the examples of finite and infinite group. If you look at an example of complex numbers or real numbers or rational numbers or natural numbers, any of these groups they contains infinite number of elements. So, these are infinite groups with the usual binary operation called addition. Now, let us take an example for a finite group. So, if you are taking a fourth root of unity as a group then and uh, the operation binary operation defined here is a multiplication then this is an example of a finite group with four elements in a group. In this video you learned that a non-empty set G is said to be group with respect to binary operation if its axioms are satisfied and a group is said to be finite if the number of elements in a group is finite otherwise it is said to be infinite group. Different applications of group theory are robotics, computer vision, graphics, medical image analysis and many more in our daily life. Thank you.